Welcome back to Fixing My Faith. My name is Vern. And today we're going to talk about uh, the subject that came up from one of our uh, subscribers on the channel. And uh, it was about uh, the Holy Spirit and how does the Holy Spirit work. But first of all, before we talk about the Holy Spirit, for many of us that are on this channel, um, we're perhaps religious. And for many of us that are on this channel, perhaps we're we're religious and we're still going to the kingdom hall. Maybe we're, we're in a family unit and uh, we can't break the family unit up because that would not be wise um, to, uh, to, to leave. And we don't want to um, control our family. We want to allow them to, to choose, to have the freedom to choose their own spirituality. And uh, we're going to talk about that in a bit. And uh, I think for me, this is a bit of a change as I'm waking up more and as I'm really looking down and realizing that uh, there's a lot of difficult situations out there. And I know I ran, ran a series of videos that were called Run Like Hell. And, and that's good. They were good videos. I stand by the videos because of the content and the scriptures in the videos. But uh, what I realize now is that it's not prudent for everyone just to walk out the door of the religion. And we're going to get into that here in a few moments. First of all, Religion, uh, the very word religion means a, a belief in or worshiping a superhuman power. And then we go further down the noun religion, uh, the service and worship of God or supernatural belief in or devotion to religious faith or observance, the state of, of a person in the religious life. So when we, when we think of it from that aspect, religion has nothing to do with the church, the kingdom hall, the watchtower, the organization, the governing body. Religion has nothing to do with the Catholic Church, the Mormon Church, the Seventh-day Adventists, any of the Hindu, Muslims, or anything. Religion has to do with you and me and God. So right now, it's you and me talking together and God. But if, if, if we weren't online, it's just me and God, me and God. It has nothing to do with anybody else. That's religion. I think that's where we we get confused. We uh, we take on this belief system, and, and it becomes a shackle. It locks us up. That that we have to be in this group, this religious uh, group of people to be saved or to to get knowledge. And that's not true. And that's not what the true meaning of the word religion is. And if we take that word religion when used in the Bible. It goes back to the Greek word, and uh, that comes from a word that means to worship God. That's that's what that word means, our individual worship to God. And and the Bible is re really written so that we could we could take the lessons of it personally, not so we could lord it over or control people like it has been used in organized religion. So organized religion has taken that book and used that book to control people, to make money off people, and and we've proven and we've researched over and over on this channel that organized religions are not. They are not helping the charities, the food banks, the people of today. And that's a fact. So now let's let's go on. Um, we identified what religion is. Now, uh, I had a question that come, came up today and it says this. And again, I say, and this is Jesus. If, if two or you agree, is it Jesus speaking here? Yeah, it's parables, Matthew. These are the Gospels. So, and this section is if, if your brother sins against you. So, uh, verse 19 of Matthew 18 says, Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among you, among them. So uh, there is power in numbers, uh, but again, our, our relationship is with God. And we're going to look a little further on this, but uh, online, um, if you're listening, well, we're, if we're using the Bible, I, I would think we would attract God's Holy Spirit. I, I would like to think that, but again, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not the wisest guy. Uh, I don't know it all, and that's why you have freedom of choice you you can take out of a program what you what you need to take out of it 
And, and I used to feel that way at the Kingdom Hall. I'd sit there and listen to various topics and various discussions and and different elders would have their slant and you'd, you'd get their, their um, you would know what they're getting at. You know, you'd know if that elder doesn't like certain things, but the other elder's okay with it, you know. And so you take out of people's discussions what you want to glean from them. Uh, we just got to be careful that we don't get too much in following people because that's that's where it gets get sketchy. Uh, people are not to be followed. But again, um, the Bible tells us, yeah, God can be with us. And and if we ask it in his name, so uh, Jehovah Yahweh, uh, our intent is to, to, to ask things, to talk to God. Um, on this channel, uh, one of the things we've been asking for is some kind of a hotline to help um, some of the XJWs, JWs in. Uh, we don't want suicides. We don't want shootings. We, we want to help people because uh, this is a difficult time for many that are uh, leaving or coming out of the organization. And so I believe if we, if we ask for these things in God's name to help the afflicted, to help those ones, I, I think we can get it. And I think it's a fair thing to ask for. Um, I like this whole chapter. I like to read the whole thing when I'm looking at these things. And uh, this here part talks about the brother sinning against you, but bring another brother. So it's talking about the two or three witnesses, you know, in business or things like that. And we get the real gist of it. And then it goes on to talk down here about the parable of the unforgiving ser servant. And I think this is important because we want God's spirit to be with us. And we, we look at this one scripture where it says that, and we can run away and look and think God's spirit's with us. But let's look at the rest of it. Because I think if we don't do what the rest of it says, I don't think we'll get God's spirit. I think that's how it works. But the, the parable of the unforgiven servant. So Jesus, I won't read the whole thing. We've read this before. But uh, so Jesus, or, or he gives a parable about this master who has debts with two people. And he forgives them their debts. But the one guy, uh, he goes and he wouldn't forgive his fellow man a debt he had. And he starts choking him. <laughs> so... Uh, the master wasn't too happy, the master being Jesus. And, um, you know, this guy went to put him in prison until he should pay and uh, so on and so forth. So, so then his master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not have mercy on your fellow servant as I have mercy on you? And in the anger, his master delivered to him to the jailers until he should pay his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. And that's the real lesson here. Um, forgiveness and forgiving our brothers. And uh, a lot of the friends have left the organization uh, because they, they, they couldn't stay in it uh, any longer. And uh, But they're not forgiven. They're actually chased out. They're... Um, disfellowship, disassociated, they're treated harshly. And uh, you see, Jesus forgave the debt of the governing body, the members, you know, forgave all of our debts. And these are religious leaders. So when on this channel, when we look at the religious leaders, um, we use the Bible to hold them accountable to, for their actions. And uh, it really talks about how we should be uh, treating each one. And we should have mercy. Um, I know when I try to do my satires, I sit with the governing body in my satire little skits and I talk to them like I would talk to them today. If I went and met with them, I would give them the same information. And um, I don't think that's disrespectful at all. It's really uh, the, the satires are, are my wish upon them to improve. Um, so we're throwing it out there. We're throwing ideas out there. And and guess what? I heard, you know, we've been doing a lot of funnies on the beard bags and buckets and stuff like that and in Europe I heard from one of the uh, people online here they said that they're allowing beards in Europe <laughs> some places so it's starting to happen I think uh, maybe we are having a difference on the uh, they call us apostates they call us wicked they don't know us they don't know all of us they can come online they I, I don't think it's fair to categorize us all as as wicked but uh, I understand because Russell did that to his wife Maria he made her the wicked servant and it's interesting how today the organization is doing the very same thing 
Now, I want to look at one other thing. Um, is religion necessary? I plugged that into my little Bible tool. It took a few minutes to come up, but uh, it seems to think that uh, religion, again, being belief, uh, of course, it's a Bible tool. So it says, yes, the Bible says it's necessary. James 1 and 27 says, a religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit the orphans and the widows in their affliction. And that's really a belief, a belief in God. So if we have a belief in something, my belief is in God, Yahweh, the high God. Um, uh, we, we have to consider our, the orphans and the widows, like the phone call the other night. James 1 and 26, if anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. So when I think uh, sometimes when the governing body gets up and they say things that aren't true under oath, that's not bridling their tongue. And then they say things like children are evil, like, like throwing things out like that. Like it just doesn't make sense. And they, they do this on public broadcast. And I, it's not spontaneous. These are planned, uh, carefully worded public broadcasts that the whole governing body agrees upon. And it represents all of them. So it makes me wonder. James uh, 2, 1 to 26, my brothers show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord and glory. So there you go. No partiality. We, we Of all, all people, all religions, all races. So that's, you really have to step outside and love everyone and not look at race, religion, color, or any of these things. Galatians 5, 22 to 25, but the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gen. You know, we know the fruits of the spirit. So all the good stuff is the fruits of the spirit. That's what being religious is about. It's about having love in our lives, uh, having joy and being peaceful, kind, being kind and good. So we leave as an XJW. We don't hate anyone. Uh, we might have had some disagreements with certain people. And uh, it makes it makes us dislike the circumstances, um, which can lead to disliking the person or not wanting to have anything to do with that person. But we don't hate. Hate's a strong word. Uh, we really love people. We uh, And getting out for some of us helps us to be more joyful. Once we get through the Rutherford trance and break it all down and really wake up, then we can start experiencing joy from a different level. Our relationship with God isn't because uh, we have, we're getting out in service and putting in time. Our relationship, relationship with God is because of, of the fruits of the Spirit, the, 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 the love that we have inside us. Because we, we want to get to know God. And uh, we, see the, uh, we see that everything is from God. You know, if, if we're into uh, Mother Earth, well, we look around the Earth. It, it's a beautiful Earth if we look. If we look elsewhere, it's an ugly earth. It's all full of pollution. So it's it's what we want to focus on. And if we focus on the good and we try to help out, plant a few trees, pick up uh, garbage here and there, it help keep our earth clean. And uh, I think that it becomes personal for us. And that's really what religion is. It's 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 our belief in in a super being and 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 spreading. What does that super being stand for? Love. And spreading that out among people. Acts 17. Um, I like this. Uh, Paul again. I, uh, as much as I pick on Paul. <laughs> pick on Paul. Uh, Acts. I like some of Paul's stuff. I love a lot of his words. Um, here's one. He was passing by this unknown God. And he, he may remember he was going to the area. Op, op, I can't say that word. But he was going to Athens, and there was all these gods, and then there was this unknown god. And uh, to find common ground, he says, I'm coming to talk to you about your unknown god. And everyone gathered around, and everyone wanted to know about the unknown god. And I like that, because right now on this channel, we are pursuing an unknown area. You know, for thousands of years, people have been following organized religion for thousands of years. And now we're pursuing religion or belief or spirituality outside of all the organized religion. And, and to me, it's like that. It's an unknown thing. It's uh, we're, you know, I'm interested. This, this is uh, unknown. We're pioneering new territory. 
And uh, the more I research the Bible, the more I real, realize that the Bible is for us as individuals. It's not for groups. And uh, if we really look at it closely, Matthew 6, 1 to 34, it says, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. And sometimes that's what religion is. They build these big churches, these big temples, they reach high up. And what's it all for? It costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money to maintain this stuff. And what's it all for? Uh, is it so that uh, they can keep getting the government grants? Because they get a lot of government grants. There's a lot of tax reductions that go to religion. And religion in Canada is costing the taxpayer $2 billion a year. $2 billion a year is what religion cost us in this country. And when we look at what they're doing for charity, zero. Pretty much zero. And that's what's waking up. I think, you know, we're part of the people. You're part of the people on earth. We're all waking up and we're wondering why. Why? What's this all about? So I believe religion has come to an end. It's the horse and buggy days. It's old fashioned. And yeah, it's it's okay. But we're meeting up and we can get God's spirit right online when two or three are present. Uh, online, we can get God's spirit. It's no different than you sitting in a kingdom hall, drive, starting your car, driving for 30 miles to a kingdom hall because they sold the one that was next to you because they needed that for Ramapo. So you got to drive 30 miles to a kingdom hall now and waste all that gas. And hopefully you're carpooling if you're doing that. And you're getting there and you're uh, getting in and, you know, you're so busy. You just get in in the nick of time and you sit down and, and you're tired and you're listening to that guy talk. And it's not really the talk you wanted to listen to, but it's the talk they forced down your throat. And that's the one you have to sit there and listen to. Now, on the internet, you can come online. You can listen to whatever you want. If you want to learn about the Sabbath, there's lots of programs out there. If you want to learn about how the Watchtower is not written right, there's lots of programs out there. Uh, you can learn about all kinds of stuff. And you can even zoom into their meetings if you want. Now, here's what Matthew says. Beware of practicing righteousness before other people. I think religion is kind of like that. I, and I'm not just picking on the JWs, but all of them. They're, they're, they, they practice their righteousness in front of men. And they wear the cloaks. They get up and uh, they like to be seen. Now, Genesis, the last scripture, 15 and 6. And he believed the Lord and he counted him as righteous. Nothing to do with religions organized. This is about you and I and God. That's it. Right from the beginning in Genesis. So that's all the scriptures that I'm going to belt out at you today. Now, we did this. Uh, this is from Cultescape, and this is probably the most important part of my research so far. Uh, are you in a religious cult? This guy did a fabulous job. I recommend that you could look at that, cult-escape.com. And uh, so we did this last night on our live, and as if we we're Jehovah's Witness, and 10 out of 10 is what we had. Uh, you're in a cult. Now, I wanted to do this again with you as if I'm just a follower of Christ using the Bible online, like just online here, how we're doing it to see if we're a cult. So here it is. Is your leader the ultimate authority of your group? No, because the leader isn't here on earth, right? So does your leader have impressive made up names or titles? Yes. Yeah. The leader has different names and titles up, up there, right? Yeah. We all agree on that. We talk about that a lot. Uh, number three is your leader always right and therefore you're allowed to criti and you're not allowed to criticize him or her even if the criticism is true. So um, that could be a, 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 it's a trick question a little bit. My wife and I talked about it and uh, she brought up some really good points that helped me to think differently on this because Moses um, uh, prostrated himself before God for the people. Don't kill him. He said, don't kill them. You know, remember uh, Mount Sinai. God was done with them. You know, I just brought them out of, split the waters, brought them out of Egypt, and here they're worshiping a golden calf. I might as well just destroy them all. And they did die through the wilderness, but not that day. Only 3,000 or something. Only, I see. But anyways, uh, God, uh, you can criticize God. You can talk to God. And we see all kinds of passages through the Bible where his servants, his prophets, have, have uh, went to God and said, don't kill the people. And God didn't. So, uh, yeah, number, I'm going to go no on that. 
our, our God up there is very forgiven. You can leave if you leave. You think you leave him, but you don't. And you, you know, God's always with you. <laughs> you know, they say the footsteps in the sand. God doesn't leave us. We leave him. So uh, number four, are members of your group discouraged from reading anything that is critical of the group? Absolutely not. You know, in this group, everything goes. Uh, as far as your group is concerned, would they say that there is no legitimate reason to leave them? Uh, no, people can go. That's a no. People can come and go. We have people subscribe, unsubscribe. I don't know them. It doesn't matter. Uh, is your group suspicious about the outside world? No. I know you guys are looking at the outside world, so you guys are cool. Uh, does your group believe that they are the right religion group or ones or the only ones? No, absolutely not. I've never, I've never promoted that. Uh, are there any of the above such rules, laws in your group? No, there's no laws. Uh, no rules. You guys, everyone does what they feel they want to do. This is just information. I think that's what um, churches should be, just giving out information. It's not about rules. We don't make the rules. Everyone is religiously responsible for their own belief with God. It's between you and God. Now, if you were to leave your group, would the remaining members, family members, separate? well, absolutely. No one's going to shun anybody for leaving a group. <laughs> if you were to leave your group, would the remaining members separate themselves and see to, cease to have a normal life? Absolutely not. So there we go. We continue on. We only have one out of 10. I did this already. So definitely not a cult. Um, the Jehovah's Witnesses, when we did this last night, it was 10 out of 10. <laughs> Because there's so much put upon uh, the governing body and what they say. So that's what changes it. So our group is more like uh, if you were living in the time of Jesus and uh, you're just one of the people out there, the 5,000 people on the hill, and uh, he was uh, handing out fishes and it never went dry. And then bread, it never went dry. And then he was given these beautiful parables. Um, and then you just want to follow the guy around and hear some more of his stories. So that's kind of what this is all about. This is uh, like you and I are just following some of Jesus' stories and uh, seeing how they differ from some of the other stories. I think it's cool. Uh, we continue here. And, and this is one. I, uh, uh, this is an eye opener for me. And I hope you take this home and I hope you've listened to the program all the way through. But here's, here's the point. If you're a Jehovah's Witness and you're inside your PIMO uh, and you want to remain in your group, uh, this is really good to read. So there's many reasons why people want to stay in the group family. Uh, sometimes it's not the best thing to leave. You know, even a doctor will tell you if you're trying to quit smoking or something, he's not going to tell you to quit cold turkey or an alcoholic. They don't tell him to qu quit cold turkey because it could kill him, cause too many problems. And I think that's true too. So here's... I'm going to cover these, the, what this guy put down. A, stay and with your family, aim to gradually sow seeds in the discussion and research that might eventually make the family realize that it is a cult that you all don't want to be a part of. I know someone who did just this. His wife and three children were committed to the cult, but after 18 months of research and really examining where they were, deeply looking into the issues of self-righteousness, changing laws, hypocrisy, control, fear, exclusively, etc. The whole family came to a place of agreement and they all happily left together. So, so there's one reason to stay in. Now B, stay and change the system from within. Not an easy option, but if you are a proactive and are prepared to take the journey of research, study, and the pursuit of your values, and then commit yourself and make a plan of action. Find people who have left, uh, read books, study their stories and their reasons for leaving, and utilize the resources on the internet and YouTube. Cult leaders and committed members are usually fixed in their mind. They are not open to change, so arguing against their doctrines will never work. Ultimately, only love will melt frozen hearts, as dramatically shown by the West bro baptist members who was befriended on twitter i don't know about that one she was not argued with but instead was deeply respected listened to gently challenged until she was at a place of looking at an alternative viewpoint 
She ended up leaving and marrying the man who knew what it means to love people. Love is powerful. Love is powerful and it will melt ice. And uh, I was angry for too long. It's not good, but love is, is the key. So C, stay and put up and shut up. Oh, and by the way, love. I found that I got the love back once I undid did the uh, Rutherford trance. Once you wake up, you can. it really helps. So C, stay, put up and shut up. This is a real option that most take. Consider this. Not all have the strength to leave a place that is all they have ever known. Leaving can be very daunting and can cause fear to even think about it. Is there a place for accepting this and seeing ourselves kindly? We all have strengths and weaknesses. And by accepting this and not being hard on ourselves, we can live our life knowing we are doing our best with the strength we have. Being ruthlessly on, being ruthlessly honest with ourselves is always the best way forward. And even if you live with a, with a conflict of values and live your life under the control of the cult, at least you can live your life knowing you are doing your best with the strength you have found in yourself so far. You can always change your mind in the future. Isn't that a nice way of uh, putting it? Uh, we just stay and keep our mouth shut. We know, but the it's just too much to leave. So, and don't go with your gut instinct. And we have an internal gut instinct. It's God given, and there's a reason for it. And you go with it. Never ever go against your gut. Now, D, which may include B. So stay and have faith in God to guide you. Do you believe in God that can guide you? If so, this is the option for you. If you have chosen to stay, at least for now, I fully respect your decision and I wish you all the best. Thank you for taking this test. John, the cult escape. So we return to the main menu. So I wanted to relate that to, to you folks out there. Uh, this is where we're at on this channel. And uh, this is the compassion that we have to have. Uh, to all people on earth, no matter what religion they're in, because all people are coming out like droves are coming out of all organized religion. And that's prophesied in the Bible. Revelation talks about that. And we all know the scriptures about, about uh, a change where, uh, and I don't claim to really fully understand because I've undone it, but as Jehovah's Witnesses, we were taught that uh, Babylon would crumble. So that's uh the representation of uh, all organized religion on earth and and we see it we're actually living in that time 30 percent of the earth is now outside of organized religion and that that in itself is the biggest group on the earth today it's bigger than any of the organized groups outside and that's where you and i are perhaps you may be in but in your mind, you're not. And that's what's important. You have a relationship with God. And that's, that, that's your relationship to cultivate and to grow. So thanks again, friends. And until next time, keep living your life with love. Bye for now.